go and sell everything that came through your intellect through your providing value can i tell you jesus did not mean he should literally go and sell them when you sell something you relinquish ownership when you sell something you have parted with it he's saying there is when i look at you i see that you desire me but the reason why you have not been able to attain unto perfection is that there are many other things standing side by side with me every time i talk to believers don't tell me you love the lord to what extent love has levels we know that biology teaches us that psychology teaches us that love is not generic there are four indices according to scripture that we use to measure love number one is passion number two is pleasure number three is commitment number four is sacrifice your love is not complete until these four components are captured in it in genuine love there must be passion in genuine love there must be commitment in genuine love there must be pleasure and in genuine love there must be sacrifice the highest biblical index for measuring love is sacrifice so when you say lord i love you he says show me what you have laid down for me as proof that you love me hallelujah show me what you have laid down the testimony of enoch when the bible tells you enoch walked with god it means that he exalted god above his wife above his children above his prophetic ministry above everything that represented relevance for him this was what he was telling the rich man he says listen you want to follow me prove to me that you love me and that i mean more to you than all of these things and peter now said we have left everything jesus i was a fisherman you saw that i left everything to follow you and he says don't feel bad because can i tell you when you truly leave everything you will feel like a fool if you have not felt like a fool and felt at a loss in following god you are not yet there sacrifice is costly we have left all to follow you we have left all now we do not have any definition for our lives outside of you we are just following you and you've not told us anything i am an adult i'm a married man with children peter must be saying what is this one that we are following you every day where are we going to and he says i am more important to you than the assignment how many people love the assignment more than jesus how many people love conferences and conventions more than jesus we men of god how many of us love pulpit preaching ministry healing anointing power we will give up jesus a thousand times to get power and enoch walked with god i hope you know that you can walk for god and not walk with god there are men there was a parable of the man who was calling people into the vineyard to walk the basis of their going for many of them was negotiation they negotiated for a denary so they did not go to the vineyard because they loved him they went to the vineyard because they had a contract there are many contract christians lord i love you but i'm giving you two months i will be a worker but after two months if my breakthrough does not come whatever you see take it like that What does it mean and what does it take to walk with God? Walking with God demands total surrender. Write it down. Total surrender. We've dealt with the teachings on the will of God. You can get that. Total surrender. Father, if it is possible, take this cup off me, he said. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Listen, until we get to points in our lives where the will of God and his desire becomes bigger than our ambitions and the things that we want and the things that drive our lives, 
there are levels of intimacy we can never get into i submit to you that when you begin to walk with god the first thing he does is to bring you through his word and his spirit to a place and a point in your christian experience where he begins to dethrone every idol even if that idol represents something good it does not have to be evil once it is not god it must go down two kings cannot sit on the same throne jesus and your intellect jesus and your gifts jesus and your connections jesus and your anointing jesus and your preaching prowess jesus and your ambition jesus and your family he does not teach to be responsible or to be irresponsible but he's telling you that compared to jesus he must stand in a place and a class all by himself the bible says in the year that king uzziah died isaiah chapter 6 i isaiah saw the lord you can't see him until something dies in the year that king uzziah died i now saw the real king sitting on a throne in the year that my pride died i saw the lord in the year that my loss died i saw the lord in the year that my ambition my obsession to be great and famous as compared to revealing and glorifying jesus died i saw the lord